Hey, welcome to part three in this series about creating an analog album in a home studio. In the first two episodes, we looked at how to record and mix songs on tape, and today we're going to run through how to master them in the analog domain. This is a tricky part of the process, as there's always the risk of degrading sound quality when doing generational mixes with tape, especially considering I've tracked the album to cassette tape in the first place. So stick around and see how I'm going to try to manage these potential issues. Mastering is often referred to as a bit of a dark art, and a professional analog mastering studio would have a stack of very expensive gear. This would probably include a parametric EQ, a colouring EQ, multiband compressors, limiters, and a high-speed reel-to-reel recorder for the final master tape. On top of that, they'd have several sets of monitors and a highly treated acoustic space. Now, you can't easily compete with all that in a home studio, so I'm going to keep things simple and have to do a few workarounds. The main gear I'll be using are these two Hi-Fi VCRs, a pair of Portec clone tube equalizers by Clark, an Allen Heath mixer, and Focusrite stereo compressor limiter. I'll also be comparing my song to several professional tracks of a similar style to give me a point of reference. The aim is to get the mix sounding as good as possible on all devices. Let's get going by showing you how I've got this all set up. I'm taking a stereo feed out of the first VCR, which is playing back the unmastered audio. The signal chain then goes through the valve equalizers into the stereo compressor and into the mixer so I can monitor the audio. The mastered audio is finally fed out of the mixer into the second VCR to record the duplication master tape. Right, let's get into it then. Let's start off by turning the mixer up, getting it ready for the incoming audio off the VCR. Let's see how the track sounds without any EQ or compression. Okay, so that's currently bypassed with the EQ. So let's switch the EQ on. Um, I'm going to start off with the high end. I've got the Hi-Fi boost at around 12 kilohertz, which hopefully will give the mix a bit more sheen and a bit more sparkle. I'm going to pick a kind of relatively subtle setting to begin with. Let's start with three. Now, it's important when working with this unit to get both dials set the same to try to get a, an equal stereo picture. Um, we've also got the bandwidth at which we cut or boost the signal. And currently it's at zero, so it's going to be quite sharp. I'm going to pop that into the middle to see how it sounds. I hope to give it kind of a more of a broad, less aggressive EQ curve. All right, so EQ's on. Let's play a section to see how it sounds. I got a whole lot of friends now in my tower, but they were fed up Take it down to 10. And let's just bypass that and see what the difference is. Back on again. It's pretty subtle, but I think that gives the audio a touch more sparkle on the high end. On to the high frequency cut controls next. So I'm gonna take a little bit of high end off, which should cut out any of the harshness and unwanted noise or tape hiss at around 20 kilohertz. Let's play a section to see if that helps. All right, let's pause again. I'm going to leave that for the moment. It sounds about right to me. I'll probably be able to tell better once I listen back to it. On to the, um, the low frequencies now. I want to give it a bit more boost in the low end just to give it a bit more warmth. I've set it around 100 hertz, which is not the lowest band available here, but it'll be where a lot of the bass frequencies sit. Now, not only can you boost the low frequencies, you can also cut it at the same frequency as well, which is one of the features of the Pultec style design. And what this can do is slightly help to tighten up the low end. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. 
taking cuts out. And back in. Yeah, that, that sounds like it's kind of improving things a little bit. Now we've got the rough EQ done, let's move on to compression. To be honest, I wouldn't have chosen this unit for mastering purposes, but I already own it and it gets the job done. It's got these presets, but a lot of them are quite aggressive and I've found Limit to be the most musical and transparent of them all. I'm gonna kick it in with all the settings flat and see how it sounds. So you probably heard it gave the mix a bit of a boost. I'm going to play again and to increase the amount of compression and balance out the makeup gain to bring the volume up. All right, let's have a listen to that. So increasing the compression. And the makeup gain. I'll switch it on, then bypass it again so you can hear the difference the compressor makes. Put it in, and there's it off. Back in again. I think that's doing a reasonable job. It's definitely increasing the loudness of the mix, and you know, it's giving it a little bit of compression, but hopefully not too much. But that sounded okay at the moment, but I'll probably come back and do some tweaking off camera. Um, I'm also just about to listen to some reference tracks to make sure things are sounded okay in context. You know, always a really important thing to do when you're mastering. Everything's set up for recording the song onto the duplication tape and I've just done a short test recording to check the levels are good going to the VCR. The unmastered audio is coming from the top VCR, which goes through all the output gear and gets recorded back onto the duplication master tape in the bottom VCR. The good thing about Hi-Fi VHS is that you don't lose much quality with the second generation transfer. When I press record, you'll be hearing back the final mastered audio, which will sync up with the video footage so you can get an idea of the overall quality of the audio. All right, let's record then. Uh, I'm going to hit play on BCR1. Right, so there's an overview of how I'm dealing with the mastering stage of this analog album. Now, there's gonna be a few compromises in a home studio, but I think it's important not to let perfectionism get in the way of doing the best job you can with the materials you've got at the moment. I'd be keen to hear what you think of the project so far, so please leave some comments below. In the next episode, we're gonna move on to show you how I'm gonna create the final release on cassette and the duplication process. So hope to see you then, and thanks for watching.